Today's topic. Today's topic, we're talking about the seven pillars of health. Now, there are two different versions of the seven pillars of health. We are going to go over the generic version that basically any field of study can use. And then we're also going to go through, and really the main focus of our talk today is going to be the seven pillars of health as they relate to holistic health and holistic nutrition. The purpose of our talk today is to understand the seven pillars of health and how you can use those to improve your health. It's really important. Um, it's what my practice is focused on. I use the seven pillars as almost a checklist when I'm working with clients. Um, the biggest reason why is because when you go through each one of the categories, you're getting a well-rounded, balanced health foundation, okay? I truly, and you guys have heard me say this time and time again, I truly believe that food is our foundation. What we put into our body, what we put onto our body is the key to a healthy foundation, right? You build everything from that, from that base, from that foundation. It's like a house. You don't have a solid foundation. Nothing else works, right? So why the number seven? And hmm, let me take a step back because it just hit me. We are live on YouTube. A lot of people may not know who I am. This channel is all about how to be healthy in a wild world. Our world has exploded and I thought it was wild before and then come COVID and pandemic and here we are. Um, we have to be healthy in our world, in our circumstances. This is the channel you come to for real talk. I don't sugarcoat anything. If your ears are sensitive, please know I do cuss occasionally. Um, and if you want to hear the real truth and how to apply that to your life and how to live a healthier life, um, reduce inflammation, especially if you're fighting autoimmune and chronic illnesses, this is the place that you want to be. All right, so now let's get back into it. So why the number seven? What's the purpose of the number seven? Have you noticed that it pops up a lot? In religious texts, and now for the record, I am not religious, I'm spiritual. I did not grow up going to church. Um, I really don't know a lot about it, so I rely on other people and you know, basic research to, to learn things. Um, but, <clears throat> And I say that because I know that there is more to the statement I'm about to say than what I'm saying. But for purposes of our discussion, I'm dialing it back and keeping it simple because there are a lot of different religions in this world, a lot of different beliefs. There are varieties within each religion and within each belief structure. So please know this is just a generic statement, okay? Um, and it's based off what philosophers have found over the years, all right? For the newbies, I love my coffee, I love my wine, I love my chocolate. Dairy-free, because I don't have a choice. And uh, yes, I enjoy all of them with creamer. I make no, I, I don't hide it. <laughs> all right, so the number seven is associated with divine perfection. Okay, there are seven notes in a music scale. There are seven days of a week, or in a week. Um, in the beginning, it took seven days to create the world, right? Astronomers way back when discovered that seven days is a cycle. And I can't tell you exactly how I would have to go back and research that, but I know that seven days is pinnacle, the 24 hours is pinnacle, 24 hours is the full cycle of the earth, seven circles around, um, I don't really know what that means, I would have to look that up, but there, there are seven days of the week, there are seven notes on a scale, seven directions, up, down, right, yeah, I don't know my left or my right, right, left, forward, backward, center, right, and did not know this till today, there are seven colors in a full rainbow. The number seven is, it's representative of divine perfection, right? 
It means completeness. And in some religious texts, it represents the sum of two parts because seven is not a whole number. It has to bring two parts together to create the number of seven or the number seven. Now, in some religions, what that means is it is the combination of the world of life and the world of death, afterlife, however you want to say that. Okay. Um, seven signifies completeness, wholeness. And in holistic health, holistic means whole of parts, right? It's the sum of all the parts, all the things that make you, you. And that gets us to the overall well-balanced pillars of health, the generic version that overrides and is the umbrella for all the other ones you see below, including the one that we are going to talk about today. The seven pillars of health, and for those of you who are new, I always have notes because I have ADHD and uh, I'm a bit hyperactive. Don't need coffee, but I'm going to drink it anyway. And <clears throat> what that means is I can go off on tangents and talk your ear off, um, but I like to stay focused on the topic at hand. So I always have notes. Um, so the seven pillars of health, the umbrella seven pillars of health, spiritual, emotional, intellectual, physical, social, environmental, and financial. Now, there are only a few of these that we focus on in holistic health because financial and environmental, there's only so much we can control here, okay? Intellectual, same thing. So if you're looking at improving intellectual health, that's learning, and that's going to go from, you know, learning from us as far as health and nutrition and improving that, but it's also learning in all other areas of life. Financial, it's living within your means. It's understanding, you know, how much you have coming in, how much going out. Now, this can get a bit wonky if you're going through stressful times. Any of these can. But think about it like this. When you Google seven pillars of health, you typically see pillars like the Colosseum. It looks like the front of um, a Greek Colosseum. Okay, you've got your pillars, right? Those beautiful pillars. Oh, I love Greek architecture. Each one represents one area of health that creates your whole. Well, if you have a healthy foundation, then all the pillars are holding up your roof, right? If one is a bit wonky, if one needs some repair, the roof's not going to fall down because this, the others are going to hold them up. If you need repair on three, if you need repair on two, your roof might wobble a little bit, but the other pillars are going to help hold the weight while you repair the ones that need to be repaired. So as you're looking at the seven pillars of health, I want you to think about this umbrella that it's not just the things that we're talking about today. The things we're talking about today, the seven pillars of health that I am presenting to you today are directly related to your health and well-being as it relates to your diet and your physical activity. Okay, mind, body, and spirit. Holistic means a combination of some of the parts. That's all three. Okay, it also includes your environment. That which you can control. There is a lot of our environment that is outside of our control. Allergies. I can move anywhere. I could. I've, I've lived in multiple areas in this country, but I'm telling you guys, I have allergies everywhere because the, the base of my environmental allergies are grasses and trees. The trees go and have fun, and I sound like a nasally little, uh, what, what's it, animal? I sound like a frog. That's what I sound like. I sound like a frog. So that being said, I could go anywhere and have allergies. It's an environmental thing. I can't control it. What I can control is how I help my body manage and deal and prepare for allergy times, for the seasonal allergies. All right. <clears throat> so now let's get into our seven here, the holistic health model of wellness. All right. Now, what this does is it combines Eastern health and medicine as well as Western, okay? These two blend together and create holistic health. 
And holistic health really does focus on more natural um, therapies, natural techniques, um, natural philosophies, whole foods, um, things that are going to fuel, fuel your body well, getting rid of the process. As I always say, get rid of the crap. Caffeine, refined ingredients, refined sugar, artificial ingredients, and processed foods, right? Anything that has been processed, anything that is added in that we do not need. Now, caffeine, for those of you wondering, well, you say caffeine, but you're drinking coffee. Caffeine in excess. Let me clarify that one. You should only actually have 24 ounces of a regular cup of coffee, two shots of espresso. Um, I think cold brew, it's, it's, uh, I think it's 18 ounces. I have to, I would have to look that up. So anyway, with caffeine, you're actually better off going with tea because it has a lower content in each cup. But if you like coffee, drink your coffee. Just, just keep it in moderation like anything else. All right, so now let's talk about these seven pillars of health. The seven pillars of health within the holistic health model, water, sleep and rest, living food, and we'll talk about what that means in a minute, exercise, detoxing and cleansing, nutrition supplementation, and stress freedom. What do these all mean? Water is hydration, um, lubrication of your joints, making sure that you have enough Hydration coming in that your body is well oiled. Okay, your skin is soft. You your mucosal linings have enough moisture to allow things to flow through. That's why they're wet, so things can move. Um, your esophagus, your esophageal lining, it needs that hydration. You ever noticed if you go out, you have a party night, and the next day it's hard to swallow. You're dehydrated. Your most fragile linings show dehydration the quickest. Okay, your esophagus is one of them. Your skin, second. Eyes, your nose, your sinuses will completely dry up. Now, the only thing I have to say about that, and you know, it's kind of one of those things that you just want to look at Mother Nature and go, um. Oh, no. Dehydration does not relieve congestion, if only. Um, sleep and rest, you know, general recommendations are between seven to nine hours a night. But the one thing that I found over the years is that some of us actually thrive on less sleep. You know, we crash, we crash hard, we sleep hard, and when we wake up, we're feeling well rested. If you are energized throughout the day, you get a set number of hours of sleep and it does not fall within what, what conventional medicine says you should be doing and having, you're fine. We all sleep differently. Now, if we're talking three to four hours of sleep, no, that's not gonna fly. That indicates that there is something wrong. If you're looking at less than five hours, something is wrong. With holistic medicine, when we look at our lab reports, when we look at health overall, we don't just look at normal ranges as if you fall below the lowest number or higher than the higher number, then you have a problem. We look at if you're not in the healthiest segment, the most center part, there's an issue. Addressing issues early means you have a chance, a solid chance, to restore health, restore balance, and come back to homeostasis. Whatever homeostasis means in your body is different for all of us, all right? With sleep and rest, we recuperate while we sleep and when we rest, right? If you are getting less than five hours, then you are depleting your immune system, so your immune system's not working effectively, right? If you're sleeping five plus hours and your sleep is hardcore, it's on the money, you wake up, you're refreshed, you're energetic throughout the day, that 3 p.m. slump that everyone deals with is not as severe as a lot of your colleagues and your the people in your life, life say that theirs is, you're good, 
Okay, that means you're getting enough sleep to recuperate, you're getting enough sleep to replenish and revive your immune system so that it can act with its best soldiers without asking for reinforcements from the adrenals. You're good, okay? Um, there's a number of ways you can tell that you are sleep deprived. Today is a very good example of it. Um, the last couple of days, Keegan has woken up in the middle of the night. He's he's having a party, you guys. Like, he gets upset when I put him down, then I, I walk away because I'm like, okay, I can't do anything for you. You're having your own little party. I'm gonna let you have your party. Like, last night he was sitting there giggling his butt off. Giggling, talking, saying his ABCs. E-I-E-I-O, very clearly E-I-E-I-O. I, 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 I mean, anyway, needless to say, the last few nights has been frustratingly comical. <laughs> but what that means is the bags under my eyes and the dark circles under my eyes are huge. If you followed me for a while, you know I don't do a lot of makeup. I just don't. It, I, I don't like it. I don't like crap all over my face. Um, especially around my eyes. So what you see is what you get. Today, I have serious bags. I've got dark circles. Um, my skin's probably not as dewy as it normally is, which doesn't necessarily come across on video, but it may not look as healthy because even my skin is like, oh, we're so freaking tired. Because I think I got maybe four and a half hours of sleep. And for me, that is a huge deficit. I need seven plus hours, you guys. Brian can go down and wake up and he's good. Me? Mm -mm. I need my seven hours. Um, I, I'm not a fun person to be around sometimes when I don't get my seven hours. I think at this point in the boy's life, I'm, I'm pretty used to it, so it doesn't affect me as much um, as far as my, my outlook in life, as far as my emotions and my mental state, it doesn't affect me as much. I know it's temporary. I know at some point, the boys will sleep all night, I will sleep all night, we'll be fine. Um, you know, that could be as early as next week. I don't know. So needless to say, sleep is rest. You get what you get. If you get under five hours, pay attention to what's happening. Maybe it's something like what I'm going through. Um, it could be something along the lines of you are suffering from grief for one reason or another, either you're moving, you're changing jobs, something significant in your life has changed. It's not necessarily that you are grieving a loved one. Okay. Grief happens in a lot of different ways. And the very first way it impacts us is our um, hunger and satiation and sleep. Okay. So pay attention to those things. If you know why you're not getting enough sleep, then that's when we come down to that supplementation and we'll we'll get down there with a deeper explanation in a minute. But that's where your supplementation comes in, okay? So the next pillar in our holistic model is living food. What does this mean? So some in some holistic circles, you hear living food and dead food, right? So you want to eat living food, not dead food. <clears throat> In this example, and in, in our purposes, dead food is simply chemically processed foods. It is all the ingredients in the foods that fall under the crap, okay? Excess caffeine, refined ingredients or sugar, artificial ingredients, and processed foods. That's what we're talking about when we say dead foods. Living foods is your whole foods, they're whole grains, they're they can be animal products for those of you who eat meat, okay? It's not, it does not mean animal products versus coming out of the earth. That That's that's a different holistic person telling you that. That is not me. Um, in this model, which is actually, it comes from Dr. Don Colbert, okay? He wrote a book in if this topic intrigues you, you will love his book. He really deep dives into every single category in our holistic model, okay? And it's literally just seven pillars of health. That's it, great author. So for his purposes, what he found that focusing on living food and focusing on the, the idea that living food is just simply not crap, 
is easier for us to digest. It's easier for us to pay attention to and to manage when we're looking at health. You know, when we look at health, we don't want to look at it and get overwhelmed and, oh, we have to pay attention to all these different things. Yeah, I've told you in the past, I'm going to keep telling you, you don't have to do that. You have to pay attention to the things that apply to your life. Absolutely. Um, but when you're looking at living food versus dead food, we're literally just looking at whole food sources versus crap. That's it. Okay. Exercise. What is meant by exercise in this pillar is daily activity. Now, exercise is the middle pillar. And it's middle for a reason. If you look at this as a circle, exercise is in the center because daily activity helps things move, right? The signals that go from your brain to your gut via your vagus nerve and your, your HPA axis, that's not going to go anywhere if you're not moving, right? So you have to move. Exercise is one of the key pillars, even though in science, ooh, that's weird, in science and in health, we look at exercise as an added component. It's an added component, but it's a very key component. And when you think about exercise, you don't necessarily need to look at exercise as I have to take X amount of time away from my family, away from my house, away from everything, dedicated time, here's my time slot to exercise. You don't necessarily have to do that. What you do have to do is you have to be active, right? That doesn't mean you have to go run five miles. It doesn't mean you have to do a strength workout. It means you have to work your body. You have to be active, okay? Yes, you need strength. Yes, you need stretching. And yes, you need cardio. Because each one of those works and strains, trains, hmm, get my words right, works and trains a different part of your body. Cardio, we talked about this two weeks ago. Cardio works your circulatory system, gets that blood flowing, works your organs, helps those muscles contract and release, right? Gets them into shape. It helps keep them in shape. Stretching stretches out your muscles and allows fluid to flow through. So if there are areas where you have performed strength training and those muscles have become so tight that they're kind of creating little tiny knots, you stretch your muscles, you get lubrication flowing through there. Now your muscles are, are feeling nice and loose again. And not, I'm not talking loosey-goosey, bat wings, all that. I'm talking... They are able to move without friction, okay? Imagine going down a plastic slide in the heat without water. That's the friction we're talking about. Now, with strength and resistance training, this is where a lot of people get a little confused. You think you have to have weights, you have to have bands, you have to have everything else. Nope. You have a body. You have the perfect tool for resistance training. You can use your milk judge. You can use, um, I mean, it's simple, but a coffee cup. There was a time, so I have two injuries in my left hand. Dog bite, which severed the tendon here, and <laughs> avocado hand. If you don't know what that is, look it up. I'm not telling you, it's quite disgusting. Um, what that means is, when I was healing from this injury, I couldn't grip. So that meant holding a coffee cup was the best exercise, one of the best exercises I could do once I got going on tennis ball and rubber ball and things like that, right? To this day, I don't have a lot of strength and that avocado hand accident really just cemented it. But for some people, this is a lot. You know, when you're recovering from injury, when you're recovering from surgery, it's a lot. What if you have been struggling to figure out what's happening and all of a sudden doctors tell you you have RA and you have fibro or you have fibro? That means you're going to have to start way back at the beginning and you're going to have to do small things like lift a coffee cup. Sometimes it's 
it's more difficult than you think. You can do a lot with a three, like a one or a three pound weight. Oh my gosh, you guys. You wanna make it harder, slow it down. That's how you make it harder, that's the trick. All right, so another one that people get, they get wrapped up in the word. And I wanna make sure when we talk about the fifth pillar that you understand that this is a daily thing that your body does detoxification and cleansing. Our liver does this on a daily basis. I am not talking, I'm gonna take three days and do a cleanse. We're not talking about the three day reset. We're not talking about any of that, okay? Fasting, no. This is legitimately just a normal bodily function that we need to support. So whatever you put into your body, your bot, your liver is going to filter. Okay. Um, there is something called um, non-alcoholic fatty liver cirrhosis. Okay. What that is, is something that has been developing over the years. And it, it wasn't present in our societies in our society in the 60s. It's something that actually is, I think it's the 80s, 1980s or 1990s, um, more and more incidents started coming in where people were not alcoholics. They most people didn't drink a drop of alcohol in their lives. But their diet, the base of their diet and the, a lot of the core root of their diet sugar and processed ingredients your liver still has to process that and it's like your car if you don't put oil and gas into your car it's not going to run well right so for us that's gas is fuel oil is lubrication right but what if you put synthetic gas in is that gonna fuel your car? Well, we haven't created that yet. It hasn't been developed. And it hasn't been developed yet because while they've tried, it's not reliable. It destroys our engines. If you put diesel into a normal gasoline engine, what happens? And vice versa. It's destructive. When you look at your liver and you look at the function that the liver or the, the functions and the role that the liver plays in your diet, what you put into your mouth directly impacts your liver. Just because you don't drink alcohol does not mean you are not negatively impacting or positively impacting your liver. You have a choice. Things like lemon water, um, keeping your diet more plant-based. Plants are much easier to digest and metabolize and filter than animal products are. They're, they're just easier to break down because they're a natural substance. Um, animal products, so there, there's kind of a more difficult to less difficult. So the most difficult animal product to digest is red meat. I'm going to go off on a tangent for just a second. It's red meat. Okay, it's very difficult to break up those fibers. They're Z fibers. They do this. And the stronger and the tighter the meat and tighter the muscle, the harder it is to digest. Nine times out of ten, red meat does not digest until it hits our intestines. It's why when you don't eat red meat for a while, it feels like you just ate a rock. It doesn't dissolve in your mouth. It doesn't dissolve in your stomach. It goes all the way through to your intestines. And once it hits your intestines, then our body is able to break it up. Chicken, same thing. Okay, a little less. Chicken, poultry, turkey, um, game birds, that's going to be next. Uh, pork is in there, it's all the white meats, and then you have your fish. 
and after fish are going to be all of your plants. Plants are the easiest food on the planet for our bodies to digest, metabolize, and filter. Okay, so if we're looking at number five and we really want to maintain the health and the well-being of our detoxification process, we need to look at our diet and figure out where we can make some shifts. You know, if the struggle in your world is that getting food on the table is really difficult, there are options. Um, it's, it's a long video to watch and I'm working on breaking those up so that you can get little snippets from our class a couple of weeks ago, the plant-based eating. And I'm going to revisit that every couple of months because it was information that a lot of you really, I mean, I've heard from so many more of you from that than I have these lives. So we'll revisit that um, and just kind of make, a, make that a quarterly thing so that we can revisit the topics, address questions that have come up, um, and give you guys some more menus and recipe demos. Um, there are things in there that we talked about, the my chicken fajita recipe, the shredded chicken. Chicken, salsa, dump it in, crock pot, instant pot, whatever, and you either take a mixer or you take forks and you shred it and you have food. Just because you have zero time does not mean you can't prepare food. It means that when you are buying groceries, your grocery shopping looks a little different. And our grocery stores are working with us now, especially after COVID, there actually have been some positive shifts and changes in our world. One of them, is that the produce sections, even out here in Bumfog Nowhere, the produce sections have prepared foods from chopped up vegetables, chopped up fruit. There are even um, like a fajita mix. And basically all you have to do is dump it into oil, dump your meat into the same pan, let it stir fry, and you have fajitas. They legitimately put three different red bell peppers. Some of them actually have jalapenos, it's kind of fun. Um, and seasoning. When you look at the package, some of them have the seasoning in it, some of them don't, but they've sprinkled seasoning all over the vegetables. So when you stir fry those vegetables, you know, they get all juicy. Now you put your meat into that and the meat soaks up all of that juice and it gets all nice and juicy and oh my gosh, it is, it is really good. Now you can take, beans and put it in there keep it vegetarian you can put more vegetables into that um things like asparagus uh brussels sprouts i know it, it sounds weird using those as like taco ingredients um cruciferous foods broccoli and cauliflower try it just once just just for me just for shits and giggles try it one night you see asparagus, it's nice and big and juicy and ready to be cooked. Try it. It's actually pretty good. Um, sounds really weird and off the wall, but I'm telling you guys, they're, the flavors of our food are there. All right, so now we need to talk about supplementation and why this has even become a thing. It is well known among many of us that the soil that grows our food, the soil that our food comes from, has been tainted, okay? Many, many, many moons ago, our ancestors, and not that long ago either, um, they were trying to grow more crops. There was this war. There was, you know, people were struggling to eat. They were struggling to find food. So the farmers decided we needed to do something, right? So the something that they did was to put um, chemicals on the farms, get rid of the bugs, get rid of the rodents, get rid of the things that are going to prevent the, the plants from growing. They put pesticides in the seeds to help the farmers so they didn't have to do multiple things to make it easier on them. They put chemicals and other ingredients um, into our food to help it grow bigger. 
We've learned about hydroponic planting. Um, we've learned about a lot of different ways of farming, but we learned about it because of the deficits that we're finding within our soil, within our, our current food system. It's why supplementation has taken this great leap in our society and why it's such a big marketing campaign. I'm a firm believer that there's something out there for everybody, but holistic health says that what I need, you don't need. We are all unique individuals. Our lifestyle, our DNA, um, the things that we have put our bodies through, our likes, dislikes, as far as food goes, the things we put on our body, our environment outside and inside, they all make up us. It's called bio-individuality, okay? Your bio-individuality determines the nutrients that you need to have within your body, okay? There are nutrients that we absorb well and there are nutrients that we do not absorb well, okay? Everyone is different. I don't absorb B vitamins very well. I have to take a supplement to help my body absorb what I'm eating, okay? What we're eating, even if you had the healthiest diet possible, you still need to supplement. Yes, it sucks. I hate taking pills. My supplementation comes from powders. There's um, a company out there called Sprayology. Spray. Right? You spray your multivitamin into your mouth. You spray vitamin D. It's a homeopathic preparation. It's a homeopathic remedy, but it still works. Um, another favorite of mine is standard process. So let's say I had someone recently tell me that they reacted to B vitamins, right? To like your normal B vitamin supplement, the organic, all natural version. Well, and she's not vegan, by the way. Standard Process has a different way of looking at things. When they look at supplementation, they do not look at it as here is your multivitamin, we're giving you all of these things. They're providing the ingredients to your body so that your body can derive and pull out those nutrients. So their B vitamin actually comes from bovine liver because organ meats is where a lot of really concentrated B vitamins are, that's where they live. So the supplementation, and for the record, you can take it, it doesn't taste like liver. I've tried it, um, you know me, my mind. <laughs> I see something and I can't take it because of my mind, but I have tried it, okay? And it does not give you an aftertaste, nothing like that. What it does is it provides your body the ingredients it needs, the concentrated ingredients it needs to produce the B vitamins it needs. So it's providing you the B vitamins, but it's providing it to you through a whole food source, a concentrated whole food source. It's one of the things I like about it. Um, the only issue I have with it is that it's not vegan, so a lot of my clients cannot take it. But if you have issues taking your normal, traditional, whole food B vitamin supplement, the standard process B complex is actually a really good alternative. You can, act, you can now find them on Amazon. Standard process has put up a store on Amazon, so you can go find them there. You don't necessarily need to go to um, a practitioner to get it, okay? If you have a practitioner, by all means, because you're going to get a better deal from them than you would online, all right? Um, it, they have a set standard process, just like all supplementation companies. They have a set retail price, okay? And as practitioners, we are allowed like a 10% window, which is why a lot of times you'll find that if you're already a client, you get 10% off. It's because we're, we're legally able to give you that 10% off rather than making money off of you from your supplementation as well as the package that you're paying for. Now all we're doing is giving you supplementation at cost. It, it's just a way to help you do what you need to do 
to be the healthiest person possible, right? To restore that balance and to maintain your homeostasis. All right, last one. And I love that this is the last pillar because so many people overlook this and they think, oh, you know, we'll get over it. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Stress. Stress freedom, stress management. Um, Dr. Colbert calls it freedom from stress. That's what he labels the seventh killer. We will never be free of stress. There will always be something in our world that stresses us out. How we manage stress will help either prevent or manage chronic illness, including food sensitivities, intolerances, and autoimmune disorders, okay? An autoimmune disorder is only genetic 5 to 10% of the time. A chronic illness is only genetic 5 to 10% of the time. 65 to 75% of the time, it's how we take care of ourselves. And in some cases, chronic stress is just a thing, okay? High-level stress jobs like sales, um, medical professionals, especially now, chronic stress is just part of life. It doesn't mean, when I say, when I say stress freedom and when Dr. Colbert says freedom from stress, what we're talking about is not you get to get rid of the stress completely. That's basically impossible in this society. It is. I mean, if we're, if we're talking real talk, which you know you get here, it, it's just impossible to get rid of stress. You always have stress. And there's good stress and there's bad stress. And we definitely need um, at times to have, you know, a spike and a drop. Keeps our bodies strange. Keeps our bodies on its toes, right? But what we don't need is to let chronic stress run rampant. We don't let chronic stress, stress rule us, okay? Our conscious brain has a say-so over the stress that is trying to run rampant back here in our subconscious, right? So a couple of things you can do, breathing exercises, a good one, take Thumb and forefinger, right here. Press with your pinky, breathe in. Press with your thumb, breathe out. 10 times, okay? It takes less than a minute. It can take longer. It, it, that's totally up to you. It resets your brain. That flow of oxygen into your body is almost like Someone just came and gave you a big hug and calmed you down. It's a reset. It is something you can practice multiple times a day um, to help in tough times. Eating foods that are happy foods. So dark leafy greens, apples, citrus. Um, what's another one? Um, cruciferous foods. All of these, anything that comes from the ground will help you manage stress, okay? Uh, the nutrients and the micro, micronutrients and the minerals that are found within these plants, especially the ones grown from the ground, and I mean ground, not hydroponic ground, um, they give you minerals and vitamins that help reduce that stress. It helps fuel your adrenal system and your stress responses so it doesn't feel like you are depleting them every five seconds. It's not like you're running after your adrenals and your stress response to refuel it. You're refueling it before you get in the car and go. Our cars won't run without fuel, right? Have you heard this? It's been going around TikTok. You can't pour from an empty cup. Your cup needs to be full so you can pour into your stress response. You can pour into your life. You can pour into your loved ones. Well, you have to put something there to spill out. Okay. Um, a couple of other stress management techniques, yoga, mindset, um, the mindset exercises that we've done in the past, like gratitude journaling, 
talked a lot about this last week. So if you haven't seen that, it's it's up live in the Facebook as a replay, as well as on YouTube as a, a replay um, inside the Monday Live playlist. Um, you could do things like going for a walk. 10 to 15 minutes of consistent activity. And I, I mean, as simple as dancing in your chair. I'm trying not to dance hardcore because I actually have a lot of coffee in here. Um, <laughs> but legit, dance in your chair. If you're at work and you can't get out of your chair, dance in your chair for 10, 15 minutes. That activity releases endorphins. Your endorphins fuel your stress response. They go over to your stress and your adrenals and they say, we got you. Pat you on the back. Put their arm around you. They hold your stress. They fuel it. And they give you a little bit more energy. You know, happy-go-lucky energy, which tells your subconscious brain, it's cool, we got this. If your brain thinks that you're in control, then you are not in danger. That means it doesn't need to produce as much of a stress response because you got this. You feel more in control. You feel empowered. You feel energetic. And this response can come from two things. Breathing exercises, meditation, however that looks for you. Some of us, that looks like quiet activity. You know, going walking by yourself, things like that. Or from the food that you eat. It can be as simple as sitting and having a cup of tea. And, you know, if you get two minutes to have a cup of tea, that's a long time. Take your time. It's not going to take you two minutes to drink a cup of tea. But, you know, just sipping, the act of sipping versus drinking. It's a slow and controlled activity, a slow and controlled action that tells your brain we don't need to overreact. Slow your roll, calm your ass down. We got this, we're covered. These are really important activities to pay attention to because when you look at stress management, especially when you're in a time of turmoil, okay? Hi, Shana. Mm. Um, I'm glad it's helping. So when you look at stress management and you're in a time of turmoil, it can be really difficult to take a minute because then your brain starts thinking and the emotions start flowing and your brain thinks it's the time to release. And here's, here's the thing, you guys, with trauma, with past trauma, with current trauma, trauma being anything that is hurting you, okay? Emotionally hurting you. That's, that's the category of trauma we're talking about right now. If you try and push off dealing with the emotions, dealing with the hurt, dealing with the pain, your brain, your subconscious brain will decide when to let those, when to open the gates. Let's put it that way. When to knock down the dam and open up the gates. Mama Gina, um, and she's kind of a controversial author, author, but I love, I love her teachings. Um, if you can get past the first part, which can be offensive to a lot of people, and really go directly towards what her base philosophies are. It's empowering women to feel like themselves, wholly, 100% like themselves. Like the goddesses that we are, the queens, however you want to phrase that. If you are a queen, if you are a priestess, if you are a goddess, you have a crown. We all have crowns of some sort. Call yourself whatever you want to make yourself feel higher than you ever thought possible, right? More powerful than you ever thought possible. That's her teachings. She has one activity that she calls swamping. 
I love the term. I absolutely love the term. And I never, I've done this in the past, but I've never actually put a name to it. She put a name to it. Here's what it is. You take a set duration of time. And this is really helpful. You know, those moments where you feel like you just want to, you just want to cry. Like life has just hit you so hardcore that you just want to cry. But you're, you're at work or you're out shopping or you're, you're somewhere that you can't. Swamping is where you take a set duration of time. You put on music, you do, you dance, you cry, you pound on pillows, you talk to yourself, you scream, you yell, you do whatever you feel in that moment is the release you need. And in some cases, you need to just let it go. Don't put a timeline on yourself. Just let it all out because it is that hurtful. It is. It hurts that bad that you just... You just need to let it go. It's something that in society we are not taught to do. We're taught not to let our emotions out. Um, Miranda Lambert has a, I think it's Miranda Lambert. Oh my gosh, I'm going to, I have to look it up make sure I have the name right. She has a song out and it's been forever and I, I love it. And one of the lines is um, that her mom is telling her to hide her crazy. We are taught in society to hide our crazy. When we hide our crazy, we are producing more chronic stress. I am not saying you let your crazy out in the middle of Walmart because I know exactly where you're going to end up and um, nobody needs to be on that Facebook page. None of us, we, we don't need to go there. Um, so when you're going through something like that, Thank you. Yes. I never get, I, I, I'm, I'm, I suck at getting songs with the, with the, the artists. <laughs> um, when you're going through stuff and it feels like it's just weighing on your shoulder and weighing on your shoulder and you're doing everything and it's just not going away. Look at your schedule because I guarantee you, if you have a weight on your, on your shoulders like that, your schedule's pretty tight. So look at your schedule. Figure out where you can put it in. And if you don't know this yet, glasses hide bags really well. Watch. See? Right? Really baggy. Really puffy up here, too. No sleep. Toddlers glasses. See where the line goes? Right where the bags are. So if you are at work and your only time frame to swamp is lunchtime, get yourself some glasses. You should have, if, if you're on the computer all day, you should have blue light lenses anyway, even if you do not need a, a prescription. Okay. Blue light lenses will actually help Prevent your eyes from, from tiring and fatiguing. Total side tangent, by the way. <laughs> but from a purely, purely visual perspective, when you come back from lunch, nobody will know you're crying. Nobody. They won't know that you just spent the last hour screaming, crying, punching a pillow, um, and just letting every bit of frustration and anger and hurt out. It doesn't have to be anyone's business but your own. But your health is your number one priority. And I know I'm kind of harping on this last one, but if you are coming to see me and you are coming to work with me, especially if you are coming to work with me in my six-month program, this is a major concern. Chronic stress is the result, or is the, hmm, how do I want to say this? Chronic stress is responsible for 80 to 90% of illnesses and conditions. So like I said, if you're coming to see me and you're signing up for any of the programs, 
chronic stress is a problem. So now that I've harped on that <laughs> as long as I have, I want you guys to really look at these seven, and I'm going to put it into the description so that you have the seven pillars written out. Um, I haven't found a, a graphic that I really like, so I'm going to go create something later today, and I'll, I'll put that in here so you have a visual to put on your phone, to put on your computer, to print out, put on your wall, whatever the case is, however you need that reminder. Um, if you need it as a checklist, some people like to do that. They like checklists. They love lists. So I want to put that out there so that you have them. Because when you really look at your seven pillars, when I look at it, so let's say you're coming to me to work with me, or you're just coming to me to ask questions, I look at these seven pillars, and I check off the things you don't need help with. And nine times out of ten, the things that I need to help you with, the things that you're not 100% on doesn't mean that you don't know it. It just means that for whatever reason, it's it's a concern in your brain, okay? It's, it's a question. Food, supplementation, cleansing, and stress. Those are typically the areas that I find people need the most help. So when you look at this list, I want you to take a minute, sometime in the next 24, 36 hours, okay? Just take a minute look at the list and really evaluate where you feel these are. There is something called the wheel of life. Okay. And it includes the original umbrella categories and the way that you work this worksheet. And some of you have gotten it from me is you color in and you decide between zero to 10, 10 being best, zero being absolute zip where your health in that pillar falls. So I want you to take these holistic seven and do that. And here's why. I don't want you to look at the things that are lowest. We can fix those. Those are fixable. I want you to look at the things that you're doing well. The things that you know you can fix. Things that you're confident in already because I guarantee you there's at least two or three of them in here. It may not feel like that as I'm talking, but I'm telling you it's there. So that's your exercise for the week. That is your homework. Take these seven, give me a zero to 10 rating. And whether you send it to me, or whether you keep it for yourself, it does not matter. And really look at what you're doing well. And then Go to the mirror and give yourself a high five for every single one of them. Everything that you're doing to maintain and main, and keep that, those pillars strong and steady so that they can make up for the ones that aren't so strong and steady. Go high five yourself. Every single one. And for those who are new, yes, I am dead serious. <laughs> All right. So if you made it this far, I have like pie in the sky news. I have tried to find a way for us to engage and interact and share things exactly like we do in the Facebook group, but off social media. I found it. Um, it's called Nudge. We have our own app. I will include a link. Um, everything that you see popping up in the Facebook will be shared there. The only thing that we cannot do is live videos. Um, it's coming but it's just not there yet. Um, everything that you see coming into the Facebook group will also be shared inside of the app. If you are part of any of the programs, those are now housed inside the app. You and I already have an appointment this week, so we will be going over that separately. Um, so you ladies don't need to worry about anything. I will go over that with you. Um, a lot of you haven't even started your programs officially yet, so this is this will be an easy transition. It's much easier to use than the Practice Better system. Um, so I'm excited to share that for, with you. And if you're one of my breakers, this is your chance. Get in there and break it or try to break it. I haven't been able to break it yet. So if you're a tester, if you want to like really get in there and, and show your stuff and see what's what, let me know. 
I will share that link with you guys as soon as everything is finalized, up and ready, which should be in the next 24, 48 hours. So you should see that soon, but ah, yay. All right, so next week, we are going to dive a little bit deeper into some of these pillars of health, not all of them. Um, I, I wanna really get back to kind of food focus for the month of March. Typically for the month of March, I, March, ugh, can't talk. I do a sugar-free March Madness. This month, instead of doing that, we are gonna focus more on creating a healthy diet that's more plant-based, that gives you some of the sweets without the side effects of sugar, sugar, basic sugar, artificial crap, all that good stuff, all right? So that's gonna be our focus starting next week through the rest of March. So I will chat with you guys later. Um, if you had any technological, te man, Ooh, let's try that again. If you had any technological difficulties, let me know because this is the very first week we have streamed live in YouTube as well as Facebook. So I wanna make sure as we go through each week that we fix this. Um, I definitely need to fix my login because something happened with that in Zoom, not really sure. So for those of you who were here at the very beginning, sorry for the late start. Um, like I said, I will go back through in the replay and write in where you should start so you missed the whole first, I think it was like 10 minutes. So we'll go back through and, and you can skip all that. If you're listening on YouTube, it doesn't affect you. Um, all right, you guys, go be healthy. As always, keep it real. And I will chat with y'all on, uh, on Monday. All right. Bye, guys. Now I'm going to figure out how to. Oh, here we go. Huh. Facebook changed their system. All right. End live video. Bye, guys. See you later.